Untraceable off the internet, but that doesn't mean he won't be back. He always has to have some grand entrance at least two weeks after he gets banned from everything. It's just a repeating ongoing cycle. But for the TikTok bio, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Solomon get in the headlines for trying to do the no pants dance with another toddler. I never was a huge cupcake eater, you know what I mean? All right, welcome back ladies and ladies with dicks. It's been far too long since I've said that and I never felt better to say it now. EDP, America's favorite football fanatic. Some can even call him a legacy for what he did for the sport. From taking the Browns to the Super Bowl and then sending a what picture the of the shark art he blasted out of his ass to a 13 year old. I mean, this guy's love for the sport is outmatched. He loves the Eagles so much he would have intercourse with the child just to see them win the Super Bowl. There can be many things to say about him. He looks like a crusty sperm covered mucinex germ or perhaps he resembles Lord Balthazar if he was off his annex bar. I mean, just take a look at the beauty behind his photos. This man cannot take one flattering picture to save his life. Every picture EDP takes, it looks like one of them ugly ass gross up shots you would see in a SpongeBob episode. Just laying in bed relaxing. Bitch, it looks like you're laying under it. Like, in what nine realms is this even considered anything close to attractive? Off first glance, I would have thought I was witnessing an open casket funeral. And just look at him shirtless. It's like a charcoal mark rotisserie chicken. I mean, what woman couldn't resist? Just look at the pose. He's standing right before us like he's one of the galactic members off of the Genyu Force, posted up like a dirty sprite all might doing the symbol of grease. And take a look at them murky perkies. Throw some boxing gloves on them hoes and do a jumping jack, and I bet you that shit would probably look like Tyson Furry hitting you with a 1-2 attack. I mean, he's packing some mean-ass mammoth glamour. Shit looks like a two-pack of Chipotle burritos. I mean, how can you not just scream and run from a body that's built like ice cream that was left out in the fucking sun? It's almost impossible to ignore how his sun chip crumb-covered nips are just protruding through his fucking shirt. It almost looks like Freddy Krueger when he was popping out the wall. It's out here looking like a double crack pat back. I mean, you look like a diglet that got hit with a focus blast. Who the fuck wouldn't be filled with the gas by seeing the sight of you? So previously in our last episode of Avatar The Last Sex Offender, we watched him fight for his YouTube channel like he was fighting for Sparta and he still lost. He lost his channel, his Instagram, his pride, his reputation. Hell, the only thing he gained out of everything was a couple pounds of weight. And you know, I would at least think for publicly grooming over eight minors like you were trying to collect a Pokedex of underage sex that you would at least try to switch up your appearance just a little bit. Like it doesn't help that this guy is the most recognizable man on the planet. His ass sitting there with the little Mississippi hip dips looking like Squidward when he ate all the Krabby Patties. And if we're just being realistic, in what world would anybody mistaken this man for? Fucking Charles Bark? If I was doing the wild wolf huff and puffs going up the stairs, then I think that would be a great point of realization that it's probably time to turn a new leaf, but nope, EDP wants to be the same old dusty queef that we all know and wish we didn't know him for. Okay, sorry, I went on a little side tangent there, but as I was saying, if you missed the backstory on this man, then my last videos on this situation cover them very well. I mean, his legacy is more known than the Bible at this point. I bet you a lot of old heads would jump around if he said cupcake before Vietnam. But for those who don't know, EDP 445, which stands for Eat That Pussy 445, as we can all see, he's munching on a shit ton of it. I would hide your wives and mothers and possibly even brothers, because I bet they would even get pregnant looking at this glacier of masculinity. He was a very successful YouTuber, had over 2 million subscribers for clogging toilets and then ejaculating onto them, and that of sort. He was an incredible free thinker, creating groundbreaking philosophies such as how masturbation should be a licensed sport, and who can forget the time he broke headlines across the world with beating my dick and then bam. And that's just the tip of the iceberg for the masturbation conversation. Half of the guy's videos are literally just about him whacking me and even go as far as to name public places and restaurants that he would burst out of his bratwurst in. Ain't beating your motherfucking meat, my nigga. I've been doing that since, since 2003. Motherfucker was making his pickle sneeze in the middle of the bathroom at Applebee's. I'm going in, bitch. I'm going in, I don't give a fuck. Dumpster riding toy mobile. With all the sperm he casted down into the sewers, I wouldn't be surprised if he created the whole Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle team. Now, I would be lying if I said he didn't have some funny videos and rants back in the day, but the red flags here were already just imminent. And suddenly, one day, even though he was exposed six times before he was even caught meeting up for a 13-year-old girl, that he sent spooky dookie pics to, and sadly dick pics as well, and yes, I have seen it. It's like a shriveled up monster you would see in a fucking Willow movie. But moving on, when he arrived, to meet up with who he thought was the minor, he got set up in a sting operation where he tried to fist bump one of the interrogators and then say he actually wasn't there to smash a child, he was just there to consume a cupcake. Well, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake and then go back home. Fuck! 
then acted surprised that the catchers didn't really believe his story like what he said was completely normal and understandable as if the everyday man is going to drive for over two hours into a secluded alley just to pick up one singular cupcake that's the biggest lie out of all of this shit is him saying he was just here to pick up one cupcake bitch i know damn yeah, well you're getting at least half a dozen but he confessed to everything broke down into tears and waddled away back into his honda civic and drove off into the sunset after the video was released he was banned off his youtube channel twice he was knocked off of instagram somehow he's even banned off of discord which i find kind of odd i thought the staff of discord would give him a standing ovation and promote him to head of the team With nowhere to go and nowhere to hide because people were tracking him down like jason board getting him fired from jobs and kicked out of hotels that he was trying to stay at so you know i thought my last video was the final straw to f the camel's asshole but it turns out i was the camel because everything i said about him being removed from the internet turned out to be the exact opposite of what actually happened he rose from the grave like sean morehouse if he was on weight watchers and came back like he was leading some sort of cupcake crusade. So since my last video, he has been going hard and going strong on TikTok, an app that's mostly used by children. So that's always nice of a platform. They let their creators get so close with their audience. I thought he would get banned, but they must have had like Dan Schneider being one of the TikTok overlords or some shit. Because he has posted multiple videos and tributes of the cupcake incident and just treating it like it's an utter joke or it's something even remotely close to being forgivable. He's aware that this is what his legacy will forever be known as and he's going along with it. Like, we're all just rooting for him, fists and dicks up. EVP, you're my hero, sign my cupcake. But in reality, he's just become the internet's biggest punching bag. It is nothing but something to bring together the family with during the holidays and play Russian roulette. So without further ado, let's see what diabetic doctrines we missed since the last time we explored his TikTok page. Well, isn't this cute? It appears Jabba the Hutt released the director's cut to this whole entire series where he was telling us the truth all along. He really was sending Buck and the Wild dick pics to a child, not for sexual relations, no, but not by any chance at all, but it's a celebration. Because Big Bertha the birthday boy over here was just excited to eat his cupcake. He's had the whole world turn on his back, he went broke, he's been hired and fired from almost every single job he had. He's like Larry Needlemeyer from the f***ing gumball show. He was a security guard, an Uber driver, door dasher. Hell, you might have saw him in a tiger print run. The corn. He would probably fuck a blue collar named Chuck in the back of his pickup truck if he got five bucks. He was doing all to make ends meet. But today is the day he can finally sit after all those years of sitting. He can rest because he finally got the one and only thing he ever wanted in life. And in the end, that was just a cupcake. And some of you may call me crazy, but I call this inspiring. This man has lost absolutely everything besides the clothes sleeping into his back and still finds a way to make shit a tenfold worse for himself. He's like a reoccurring villain that keeps returning to get his ass beat every episode. I'm starting to think he has a humiliation kink at this point but i wish we can say that's the rocket ship that blasts away this great big story but that was actually one of his older tiktoks he posted so let's see what he's up to now after achieving his life goal tom brady how are you feeling God, it's like his tongue even has a chin. But as you can see, I wasn't lying when I said he still lives for the sport. Majority of his TikToks are just his thoughts and frustrations about the Eagles. Now, I'm not too familiar with football, nor why he called out Tom Brady. Perhaps it's because they both share the same passions, playing football and kissing children. Tom may have brought home seven championships, but EDP was falling not one step behind him, striking out the fucking minor leagues. I mean, just look at that smile. It's like I'm watching Pennywise reaching in for a bite. Who wouldn't plead for their lives after seeing a precious grin from Mr. Pube Chin himself? It's like I'm about to be attacked by Choo Choo Charles. I have the feeling he's just trying to get caught at this point. He is speed running to register as a sex offender. You would think after being exposed for something that is this criminal that the police would at least Google the motherfucker. He's posting TikToks of cupcakes like it's a special holiday we should all gather around for. He is actively incriminating himself on the most popular app on the planet. You're telling me there is not one active singular member of the enforcement of the law that can do one thing about it like he practically got a slap on the wrist for all of this so for him to be skipping through the dandelions after committing something as atrocious as this that any hints leads anonymous tip doesn't recognize this guy right it's like finding the needle in the crack at it you couldn't miss him and as for edp i don't know if this is his way of laying low but bust my shucks and let out our f it's working better than the fbi's most wanted fugitive at least they're trying to locate them apparently this guy is so terrifying not even the police dare to look for him but he's pretty much been posting daily for the grind he's mentioned something about reaching 1 million followers on TikTok, which he's actually somewhat close to. But with SWAT being too busy sucking tits and eating twat to actually do jack squat about everything EDP has been doing. He's been making a lot of noise actually doing it. And even got so comfortable, he did a Discord public interview on a YouTuber's channel. And in this f 
In Ped Talk, he starts out with this timeless running gag about him one-throating tacos, so he starts off this interview by turning into some polio-infested Don Polo as he gorges out another taco live on the scene. Let me see them. I gotta see the W eats. Oh, you wanna see the ghetto ones? Yeah, Look at this. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's meat and cheese. Oh, shit. <laughs> With some hot sauce. Oh, damn. He's showing off that hot sauce bottle like he on GQ doing a 10 things he can't live without. I mean, I almost went blind looking at the eyebrow eclipse he has shining above his forehead. That shit's like almost brighter than the bat single. It's like King Neptune whenever he took the bag off. This man could start a house fire if he stands by an open window. And off rip, it is still astonishing at how casual he acts. He's sitting there filled with glee looking like the old ass wise mystical tree. They say they don't give a shit. But they still go on Google, man, and they're searching up your name to see what people are saying about them. Yeah. Me, per I honestly don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit what people say about me. Like, motherfucker, you run up on me, bitch, I'm shooting your ass. Really, bitch? Really? I have to give credit when credit is due. I've never seen somebody so nonchalant about their whole entire livelihood being destroyed overnight. And then continue to throw on this act that he doesn't care about what he's done or what anybody has to say about it. Because he's just that cooch slaying woman magnet, even though the last time this man got laid was when his uncle was babysitting him. But it's pathetic. To EDP saying the word cupcake is like saying Voldemort's name. He freezes like a deer in headlights, like in this clip, for example. Cold head ass, bitch, you ugly shit. Bitch, eat my fucking ass, dog on my balls. Bitch, you look like black Shrek. The negative, the negative, the negative woman. You ain't got no guns, pussy. I'm fucking run up on your ass all black all night, pussy. Shut your ass up, or you ugly shit. What <laughs> So for him to sit there and take it all up the ass like a bronze star or a bussy baron bitch is sort of ironic when it comes to his online persona of being this villain that fears nothing but should strike fear into all. Like it was a it was a, a video pretty much like not in, not investigating you but just getting like all your information pretty much. And fucking retards, man. It's like you know, man. It's listen, dude. That's why I tell motherfuckers, man, listen, dude, you know, listen, nigga. I mean, I just don't get it. Hearing him speak is like watching old people f it just takes forever to get to the point on his sentences. Every time he answers a question, it sounds like he's reviving from a drug overdose, saying the same words over and over. You'll notice he fumbles over every sentence whenever he gets pressed. He almost sounds like somebody explaining to their mother why porn was on the computer screen. But amen to that, brother. Prove to the world that 32 and 13 is only a hip and a hop away. Age doesn't define love. Love defines age. Our Kelly, or whoever the fuck. Well, if you want to use my name to get paid upon the internet, nigga, I got you. It ain't nothing, nigga. I mean... You know, I'll, you should, I'll be more than happy to help. How polite of you to basically let the world slap their dick on your chin without any hassle or cost. Just look at that smile. That's a smile that will take a dick throughout 100 miles. I've never seen somebody so openly sad. And what I mean by that is he's realized that everything he has worked for and everyone he knows has crumbled beneath him. So now he thinks all that's left is just to basically be the punching bag everybody makes fun of and thinks people are laughing with him. But in reality, everybody is just laughing at you. You're a five and a half foot high pile of stacked horseshoes that bakes out in the sun and pollutes the air of everybody around them. And that's the harsh truth. This isn't a hiccup everyone might make when they're not keeping their eyes on the road. What you've done is disgusting and illegal. I mean, it's one of the most horrendous crimes a man can commit. You strip away the innocence and childhood out of a kid and scar her for life, and you think you can act like you just never had that intention? Extra shit. It's like, see, man, the issue with a lot of these little young-ass motherfuckers is that you're fucking with people's income. And you're trying to come in them, so what's your point? So, if you... Say you, it was the, it was reverse and you caught a pedophile. How would you interact with the person? I will pull, no real talk. Yeah, I will pull my stroking my shit. I'm horny as fuck. I'm a freak. I would just pull him aside and just be like, "Hey, man, you know, um, you know, nigga, we low key caught you, bro. Um, you know, get the fuck on, man, and just stop doing that shit, man. It ain't cool." Empowering, really. I don't think I could have said it any better myself. The best course of action to take against somebody that preys upon a child is to lecture them like a child. I mean, I was waiting for him to ask me if I wanted to go out for ice cream next. Like, what in the flying Tim Buck f was that? I feel like the only reason he was so hesitant was because he was trying to stop himself from agreeing with the motherfucker. Because he knows how stupid he sounds, because he's pretty much giving an introspect on how he would stop himself, and he can barely even do that. I mean, look at his face. He's starting to drip more sweat than a Redditor in a strip club. 
because ADP hiding his insecurity is like hiding in a bush to avoid a flamethrower. It's just painfully obvious. This motherfucker is trying everything in his power to not break character and reason why masturbation and minors are almost like bread and butter in a sense if you just look at it from an open mind, but it's just not working. Speaking about, speaking about busting a nut, when's the last time you had sex? Oh man, I got a fucked up story to tell you about that, dude. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was, as we all know you for your dashing looks and unfathomable charm. I mean, ladies, we all love a man that's a little spicy, and EDP passes all of those categories with flying color. Because the last sexual encounter we got to witness from this man was him telling a miner that he wanted to play with her in his dungeon and shake off his dragon. Which, I mean, you know, that's just something that'll make your heart warm up inside. Telling someone you want to kidnap them and fist their vagina to Valhalla? That, that would just make anyone smile. Something you could slap on your mother's birthday card. But sorry to interrupt this Romeo and Juliet story. I'm sure you guys were just dying to hear it, but anything about EDP clashing kissers and mashing pissers with any woman is just an automatic red flag for me, and I think the reasoning to that is pretty clear. What's your type yeah. of cue, EDP? What's your type of cue? Um, my type of cue... Fuck! I always thought women who wears glasses are fucking cute. Yeah, glasses are an attractive trait that many women should embrace more. It's just when the girl uses her glasses to make sure she can still go in between the fucking lines in her coloring book, that's where my line gets crossed. See, to anybody out there in the world, saying you like girls with glasses would be a normal and common interest. It's just the problem is we're dealing with a guy that would go to a high school prom and treat that shit like he was rocking out a strip club. So any answer this man dishes out about love makes my heart jump out of my stomach. I swear, as soon as EDP starts discussing about relationship, it's like the whole entire world stops. Like I'm on the final round of deal or no deal. Everything just gets so tense. But yeah, if your favorite quality of a woman is them having glasses, then my favorite quality is them having a penis. I haven't seen it personally, but how big is it inches wise? Apparently, God gave me my judgment, and I was one of the survivors that saw his beautiful work of a wiener he's managed to grow by himself. And I can be the first to say that shit is not long at all. He's acting like he's wielding a 10 inch Punisher. I hate to break it to you, that shit is like a millimeter defeater. The fact that he has this much confidence to take the center stage and lie about practically every answer he's given so far is just beyond me, and I think even signs to understand. But if you're not convinced that he hasn't changed and he's still the same old EDP we wish we didn't know and don't love, well, then I will have happily announced, and I'm sure this comes as a great shock to all of you, that EDP couldn't help but go back to his roots. He's just like William Afton. He's always after kids, and he always comes back for them. Coming back to the public, he achieved his goal of catching attention. I mean, at the time that I'm recording this, his TikTok is about to surpass a million followers. So obviously, out of that million, or rather a majority of just children following a known predator is something that'll make you stumble back. You know, the cowboys are gonna have their hands on the holsters after seeing shit like that. It was only a matter of time until EDP would have just turned into a thirsty behemoth of the seamoth and crawl out of his cave to strike again. And that's exactly what he did here. But this time, there was a shocking twist. The girl that EDP was talking to was actually legal, and not only that, she's been legal for a whole entire six days when he started to flirt with her. I just wanted to get that out of the way because, you know, I would hate to tarnish this man's good name and reputation, but instead of breaking the law, he practically spawn camped the bitch until she turned 18 like he was fucking Quagmire and advanced as soon as the clock struck 12. I'm sure EDP celebrated her sweet 18th more than Times Square celebrates the fucking ball drop, and keep in mind, EDP was talking to her prior to her being 18. So it was not like it was Shoddy's first day on Tinder, like EDP knew exactly what he was doing and started instantly rushing in like a tsunami as soon as she turned legal. But I don't want to go on any more tangents without showing the actual messages first, which are about what you would expect from him. He starts to write unwanted Wattpad fan fictions, and we know how that went in the past, so if you don't believe me, take a look at it for yourself. So on here it says, don't let anyone ever tell you you aren't beautiful, not even me, you deserve the best. I didn't trust me if I was in Louisiana. It'd be a beat down your door, smothering you with flowers and hugs. You just better prepare yourself because I'm showering you on the entire world. That's the corniest shit ever. Don't let anyone ever tell you you aren't beautiful. Not even me. God, I'm just fumbling over my words. Well, I'm not exactly an expert of romance, but what in the high tail flag fuck does that even mean? He's almost going head to head with Adam Levine style of flirting here. Just waiting for him to call that body absurd on the next slide. Like, see, you can't 
be talking about how you're going to cap a bitch that plays with your name and then the next day text this with your feet swinging in the air saying I'm going to beat down your door smothering you with flowers and hugs and you seriously expect for people to take you seriously like that's just the wildest part about all of this. So his creepiness is something that never left him. He's still up to the same old pickup lines about home invasion. It was first windows and now he wants to bust through the wall like he's a Kool-Aid man. He probably charged with that hoe looking like oh Hutch out of Rebirth. You just better prepare yourself because I'm showering you on the entire world. Why on any plane of existence would you show off to the world that you're in love with somebody that just became legal? Like what do you expect for everybody? To give you a standing ovation or be proud you're finally talking to somebody that wouldn't get you arrested? But yeah, that was pretty much it. There wasn't any special turns. It's just what you would exactly expect. I mean, this man doesn't know how to train his dragon. He fell for the bait again, even after promising with tears in his eyes and a limp dick in between his thighs, swearing to the world and everyone that lives in it, he would never talk to not only girls, but the whole entire gender of woman again. And just one year later, he pops out of the cut on some One Direction shit. Girl, don't ever let me tell you, you, you beautiful. Not even me, baby. I'm, I'm gay. <laughs> Yeah, if there's any ladies out there that are watching this, I'm sure your panties are singing sea shanties, because my god. <laughs> I mean, I really just don't know what he thought he was doing. Like, bitch, please, you got way too much confidence. You ain't gonna pop nobody's ass. Stop the bluff, Mr. Puff. And I haven't even mentioned the part where he threatened to swat hammer her door down. Like, it's amazing how he is so dedicated to his craft. I've never seen someone commit all-star adultery. So he goes after another victim. He's a criminal at large. You're boarding up the windows like you're playing their tote. And now what? What more can this monster do to run Rampage in Gotham City? Well, it's actually the lack of what he can do because EDP has come out with his alleged diagnosis of having stage 5 kidney failure. Which if you don't know, most people that have that shit end up getting wiped out within a year. Of course, out of all diseases this man could have, it has to be something that has kid in it. So with what all he's done, it was only a matter of time until karma caught up with him and I guess his kidneys decided to take action before the police could. I mean, it's still a mystery what the old boys in blue are still doing. They're probably clapping balls with Megan Halls down the fucking station for all we know. And for anyone that would ask if I do feel bad if you really did, the answer to that would be hell no. Now, I'm not exactly lighting off fireworks in my backyard and grilling up with the neighbors about it, but there should be no reason anybody on the green of the earth would have any sympathy towards this guy. He's done one of the worst crimes known to man, and for anyone to still believe, maybe, just maybe after getting exposed for the eighth, ninth time flirting with the minor, he would finally change, and maybe try to settle into a job without getting fired from it within a week, or start a family without skipping the steps, but nope, you think somebody that's built like Big Smoke wouldn't try to get a number nine? Of course he's gonna do it again. The second he gets the opportunity to because his mind is so demented that he literally can't stop himself. He probably goes through damn withdrawals looking like Spongebob when he was off that crack binge. So to answer the question, no, I don't feel bad for this guy and I find it really difficult to reason with people that do. He had everything going right for him and he's the one that decided to spread his ass out and ruin it. But grab a box of tissues because he delivers an emotional sob story about his condition on Instagram live and then proceeds to beg for money afterwards to really gather your sympathy because that's what everyone wants to hear after a sad story is to instantly be asked to sign up for a sweep stand. Bro got caught trying to meet a little girl. Okay, nigga, whatever you say, bitch. Well, I mean, you would be the person to tell the story better than anyone else. I mean, this picture is more known across the world than the fucking Mona Lisa. How could you still claim that is not you? You get out of bed every morning and then start putting on the sheet to wear. Ain't nobody mistaking your ass for anybody else. Yeah, I actually do have kidney failure. Stage five. Now, this hasn't been exactly confirmed 100% to be true, but if it is, then that means he's got about a year to go, and he really doesn't seem to be that concerned about it, judging by that clip. And it's somewhat understandable because what the fuck else does this guy have left in life to really care about? But at the same time, it could also be a publicity stunt with him trying to beg for money like he's a homeless man on the side of the street, and he might be doing it to garnish more attention and sympathy to his name. There's really just no telling what will happen next to this guy, but I think it's gonna wrap the video up here. I mean, it's apparent EDP will never change. He's already ruined any second chances he ever had by doing it again and then doing something that doesn't even deserve a second chance to begin with. And the fact that people still defend him or wish him well during all this is just ass nine to me, but I think I cover the most important events that there was to go over since my last EDP video, and in my last one I predicted it wouldn't be the last we would hear from him, and that's how I think I'm going to close this video off too. And I can't go without addressing the huge elephant in the room, even though I pretty much did for the last 20 minutes, but I know it's nothing out of the ordinary for me to not upload for a week, you know, maybe a month if we're getting a little frisky, but but three months is far too long, and I know that more than anybody else. You know, whenever I was weekly uploading back in the summer, I was really enjoying the thrill of uploading and growing my channel and getting active with the community again and talking to you guys, but a few months back I went through many more personal issues, and I've always been really open on my channel about my, like, personal life. You know, I share my music taste, you guys know that I fuck with anime, I mean, like, it curves at 
15 degrees when it's not flaccid like you guys know a lot of shit so if you want me to be a complete open book and actually just be honest what i've been going through is just a simple loss of passion loss of motivation to just creating videos and now i've reached a point where i've actually just been nervous to upload in general because of how long it's been i bet some of you motherfuckers got a family of four a mortgage paid off by the time you're seeing this so i've got over like the hump of just you know losing the passion not really getting that spark i have because i've really you know been enjoying it the past couple weeks that i've actually been putting a lot of effort into making videos again and i've noticed that's a recurring pattern with me you know i'll go through motivation like it's waves in the ocean i'll have like my peaks where you know it's like a damn tsunami crashing through the wave of conga wawa and then i'll just have like really brief periods where i'm stank water on a trash island in the middle of the ocean where the things that were so colorful to me are now just gray and dull and i'll just have like certain phases of where they'll happen in my life where i'll just be stuck in a drought and not feel you know too passionate to make a new video and i know that's fine because that's just honest human emotion but i know that this year is the first year i actually just have to stop stepping back and letting it control me and actually take action against it rather than stopping it from creating content because truth be told the hardest part for me is getting the ball rolling once i get the gears pumping you know i actually start recording getting all like the points that i want to get across editing the videos slapping in random ass memes that make no absolute sense just because i find it funny and it makes me laugh and then uploading it and seeing all the support that you guys show me especially in premiere chats having 500 plus people come out just stop what they're doing just so they can watch you it's just like it's a feeling that's indescribable and that's why i would just like to thank each and every one of you that saw me on the recommended or homepage or just you know heard from me and just started watching my videos and saw me grow and saw all the progression that i had towards this channel it really does mean a lot and it kind of just reminds me of why i even started youtube to begin with i started this because i really wanted people to you know accept me for just being me because back when i started i really didn't have any friends like i'm gonna keep it a buck with you like i was cool with a lot of people but i never got invited to shit never really like was one of the squad or one of the team that was at every function like i was always just at home playing video games always just like in my room and it's cool because i'm introverted like i'm still like that to this day obviously i got a lot better but and i'm at that stage where i'm getting better and i'm also at the point where i don't even want to talk about it because i'm just looking forward to the future and what i have planned for this year but with that being said if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to slap a like before your dad slaps you subscribe to hit my vibe and follow all my socials links down below and mark your calendar bitches i'll see you next week i i'm gonna have out this bitch